All right, good morning, guys. How are you? Can you hear me, by the way? Man, I wish I had more of everything. <laughs> I wish I had more of everything. Except for this ETHC. <laughs> this is Ethereum trust. But other than that, oh boy. Now, what if, what if the market has been trying to tell us this was coming for the past two, three weeks? Maybe not three weeks, but two weeks. And all you had to do was listen. <laughs> if you learn the skill of listening to the market, it's a very valuable skill to have as a trader. As an investor, it doesn't matter. But yeah, I wish I had um, gone heavier, but yeah. One thing that annoys me, I got short Riot when it started losing the, you know, we got the bounce, the gap down, and it bounced into the 20 EMA, the declining 20 EMA, and then mid late day, it started building lower highs, and when it started losing the VWAP, when it looked like it was about to lose the VWAP, that's when I shorted. But it still close, kind of strong. It looks, let's get the 60 minutes, so I covered uh, a third before they close because it, just in case it would gap up like it you know in this case it gapped down but if it had closed like a bit weaker maybe 63 this you know lower than this mid midday dip then I would have held full size so that's an annoying one it's always been so strong relative to Mara Mara was you know Mara closed almost near at the lows of the day <clears throat> AMC this thing broke out late day or midday, and uh, looks like it's gapping up a little bit. I bought some. Let's see if we can get back to eight bucks or something. MRNA broke down. It's gapping down. HEQ. The HEQ is my only long. No, no, sorry, it's not my only long. I also am long uh, GBTC and ETHC. Never mind. Um, but it's gapping down. Uh, Q's big gap down. I finally lost the rising 20 and now no bids. Every time it touched the 20 or undercut the 20, it went higher and, you know, this time it, this time buying the dip didn't work. We'll see. Let's see if it can reclaim the 50 or if it's going to go to the 100. That's the thing. Same thing with the Tesla. Can it go to 100 or is it going to bounce here? But yeah, look at what happened. It lost the 50 day and it's straight down. I covered up some stuff pre-market. Oh, SOS. Oh, I tried to cover it in the seven, mid-7s, but it was so thin. Yeah, okay. I covered a little bit of my short exposure pre-market. I'm going to keep the rest, just keep the trailing stops. I'm using the 10-day moving average for most of them. Tesla? Tesla, yeah, uh, that's a good question. Very good question. Uh, I would have, op uh, I would have uh, either when it started losing VWAP because it started building lower highs and lost VWAP. Look at this little mini bear flag intraday. You know, either enter here 
when it loses VWAP, takes out the intraday range, or when it takes out the opening range lows. Those would have been the entries. Let's include the pre-market data. So, you know, either here or here, if you got stopped out on the opening range highs, which I didn't because I forgot to put a stop. Uh, but yeah, I was actually thinking about adding more, uh, but I already had a lot of size. I had like, yeah, a lot of size. So I, I passed on it. But now in hindsight, you know, would have been nice to add a bit more. Uh, but, but, it is what it is. And this is now a lot of traders on tilt right now. But if you trade with rules, this can be avoided. I got stopped out of TDOC yesterday. It closed below the 20 day. And now look at it. Pre-market. XB2 closed below the 20, so I sold it. This thing actually has earnings today also, so that was another reason to sell it. Um, that's that. Like I, I've seen a, you know, I've seen a lot of these cycles. This is nothing new to me. Okay, I've been talking about the warning signs daily for the past two weeks. Um, but you know, I, 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 can, I believe a lot of traders, like there are some fanatic accounts on Twitter. You know, they are not feeling well today. And you don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be a fanatic. You want to have an open mind and listen to the market. I can't do any of parabolic shorts. Yeah, guys, no one should do them. I don't recommend anyone trade parabolics. You're going to blow up faster than a balloon that pops. Most of you. Yeah, shorts are for the summer. <laughs> Don't do shorts in the winter. <laughs> DDS. Uh, yeah. This is a good time to see which stocks are holding up the best. Because in a, maybe in a few weeks, the picture will be clearer. Maybe, you know, we, we don't know yet. Is this the start of something bigger? Or... Will the will the you know the major indices find support here and bounce? But even if they bounce here, like if the Qs bounce here, they're gonna bounce into their declining twenty and the ten days, which is you know not good. Like I, I prefer we get a nice little shakeout, get a you know, the faster it goes down, the sharper the down move is, the better. Get it over with, maybe even an undercut of the two hundred day. And then have a big, big tradable bounce. That would be the ultimate thing, but it's probably not going to happen because the, the uh, ultimate scenarios almost never happen. Your friend is still fully invested, and uh, well, it also depends where you're in, right? If you're in early, like legitimately early, like obviously you will have uh, like if you like look at wait what stocks do, does he have Chivo NIO and Sense. But if he's sitting on you know losses, if he bought them higher and he's sitting on losses, well you know, pray for him. Like a lot of these names, they can go fa down as fast as they come came, uh, went up. They can go straight back to uh, where they came from, a lot of these. It's so important to have rules in trading. Now, if you, if you bought you know, things for an investment, that's another thing. Then you shouldn't even care if the stock is down on the day. But a lot of these stocks, they've been surfing the 10 to the 20 day moving averages, and now they're breaking their uptrends. And if you go back and study through history, stocks that make big moves and surf the 20 day moving averages, when a trend breaks, bad things can happen. Educate yourselves. Important to educate yourself.
And I'm not gonna do anything near the open. I'm, I'm actually not gonna do anything. Uh, if you get a big bounce, I'm looking to maybe short a few things. Uh, not sure what yet. And also, Beely sold it yesterday. Look at what it did. Close below the 20 day. And uh, yeah, now it needs to build a new base. This one I did sell, uh, well, before the close, but yeah. I wish I'd gone short it. It was a great short setup. But yeah, sometimes it's hard to switch from long to short. Arc K. Uh, maybe if this has a big bounce, I'll maybe short some. I don't know. Square. Uh, nah, not square. This one is... No, not uh, I don't know. We'll see. I haven't decided. I'm probably not going to trade much, uh, if at all, in the open. Probably not at all. Maybe cover some things, but... I'm thinking about covering this SOS. Um, but yeah, it already bounced big in pre-market. Bingo is a good short setup. No, uh, absolutely not. It's already down a lot. Like, well, what are you looking for here? Um, Oh, if it was a good, um, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, sure, when it broke here, but it wasn't a tight setup. You want tightness. This is it was wide and loose. It was a tough one. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this you know, it's it's up. It's up. On, it was up three thousand percent in two months. You know, it, this is bound to happen. Um, you know, it could go back to three bucks. For all I know, but yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, it's a tough one. This was a tough one. I would have loved to short it, but you know, never, never got a good setup in it. Tough one. I'm on fire because I've been doing this for a quite a long time. I've seen a lot of these cycles. They don't surprise me anymore. Uh, the market has been warning about this. The, these things happening, uh, and now the big question is. Is this the start of something bigger, or was this just a, or or is this it? Are we gonna bounce now and keep going higher? That's the quick big question. Okay, good luck, guys. Wow, the CCIV, incredible. Too bad it gapped down this much. What happened on CCIV? It's called buy the rumor and sell the news. And also pipe offering is way lower apparently. Yeah, buy the rumors, sell the news. Yeah, 15 for the pipe. Disaster. 
and a lot of people are probably going to hold it. Yeah, CCIV still has a lot of downside. Just need to wait for a setup. I mean, if the pipe was at 15, if I understand the news correctly. <clears throat> you know what? I'm going to size down on GBTC. Is it lost the 10 day and uh, my final stop is going to be close below the 20 or if it loses this $43 area that's going to be my final stop and ETHC I'm sizing down that one too and closes below the 50 I'm out Yeah, mRNA, this vaccine names also. Wow, we can't even bounce. Things are not even bouncing. Jesus. Well, I guess uh, shorting things, opening range lows was the thing to do, but um, I was hoping for a bounce. So you telling me stocks can actually go down too? What type of sorcery is this? Let's see, some things are maybe bouncing a little bit. Um, yeah, it's a rigged market. It's the market makers. Can the hedge fund please stop driving the market down? <laughs> I can already imagine some of the convos going on on Wall Street bets.
Uh, why UVXY is not up that much? Well, there's not much fear. The market ex doesn't expect much volatility, but you know this thing could catch up. If we if we don't start bouncing, there's you know there's gonna be premium starting to build in into this uh, TVIX and or not sorry, sorry VXX UVXY. Seven hundred thirty-two viewers. Oh wow, amazing! And the chat with traders hasn't. Uh, it's not even out yet, right? Wait. Oh guys, we have a problem. I said I'm gonna peg the amount of viewers to the price of Tesla, guys. There's too many people. Tesla is at 6.48 and there's 7.33 people in here. Tesla start better bouncing. <laughs> Tesla better start bouncing soon. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm not gonna kick anyone. A everyone is grandfathered in forever. Except David. He's the grandfather. HEQ, oh, that, 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 that didn't last for long. <laughs> oh well. I was really hoping for some bounce and then a, a, a fade uh, mid-late day like we got yesterday in a lot of these things. But, but. Oh, AMC is reversing. Whatever. Guess I should have sold more into strength. It's kind of hard to get used to at least, you know, when you when things just keep going uh, straight up. It's you know, you sell tiny pieces into strength, but in these types of markets, you you get a pop, you gotta sell significantly into it. You know, if you want to play, you know, breakout types of uh, things. Otherwise, you're gonna get killed. Someone asked me why I was short Riot and long GBTC because they're correlated. Yes, they're both Bitcoin plays. GBTC is a Bitcoin trust and Riot is a, I think it's a Bitcoin miner or something. But the reason is because of time frames. GBTC, I have a longer time frame. I think it could go much higher, let's say a few months from here, while Riot, 
you know, I think this thing could easily go back to 40 or 30 over the next, you know, this week. Different time frames. Different trades. Yeah. <clears throat> see if this ECCIV can bounce a bit. Marie Kondo, who, who is that? Okay, <laughs> what does she has to have to do with the stock market? Did she buy the top? HWC, if I would consider, I would not consider anything on the long side. It's a financial stock. Financials are fairly strong right now, uh, even though you know most of them are extended. This is just some kind of a laggard, laggard regional bank or something. I don't know. No, this is not the time to trade breakouts. I don't care, you know, if it's a, you know, you know, just this is a time to take a step back. Let the amateurs blow up and churn their accounts, and when things get good again, that's when you start pressing. Now is the time to study. Okay, go back, study setups. Oh, did I get covered on SOS? Oh yeah, nice. Nice little trade. Wish I had more size though, but well. Because I had to cover half my position. I was short in two accounts. But I had to cover my vision uh, portion of it so to do the new margin rules and also the fact that the account is getting shut down. Um, so yeah, could have been more, but can't complain. Okay, looks like it got stopped out of HEQ. NCTY, yep. And right now I don't see anything to do. The only thing I've done so far, I got rid of ETHC, sized down some of my uh, shorts, got rid of this HEQ since it stopped me out. And other than that, and Futo is the only new position I shorted at opening range lows. Actually I chased it a little bit, but um, that's fine. I only have half size. Uh, da, 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 da. CCIV failed the bounce. All right. Yeah, it could be a early hard survivor type of a day. First, I gotta get a knock -off. Be right back.
is my portfolio up or down since the beginning of the correction? You mean since yesterday? And my account is up a lot. Let's just say that. You know, I've been getting rid of my, you know, positions over the past, you know, last week I got rid of, like la last week I got stopped out of a lot of things that I bought a week, week before. That was another warning sign, you know, the warning signs just kept stacking up. And coming into this week, I had very little long exposure. And I had started building uh, some short exposure in Tesla and plug mainly. And yesterday I got rid of pretty much my last stock longs and uh, you know entered a bunch of new shorts TQQ added to Tesla added mRNA opened riot <clears throat> unfortunately I came in long these uh, coin ETFs but yeah I got rid of ETHC so far and GBTC I'm probably if it can't start bouncing on this 20 days soon I'll probably get rid of it too Let's see. <clears throat> so far, I'm nearing hundred percent gain this year, which is not bad. But if I had a smaller account, it would be significantly higher. There's so many great setups I haven't been able to trade because they were too thin. Two that stand out, TRXC and Sense. Two high tight flags that both doubled in a week. And there's many more. There's many more. Uh, I, I, these are two that I remember right off the bat. Man, there's been so many fun and, and also on the short side like parabolic shorts I've had to pass on because they're too thin like guys if you learn to trade if you learn setups when you realize what's important in the markets because most people focus on the wrong things like there's so much opportunity it's unbelievable it's un fucking believable If you learn a timeless setup, something, a setup that keeps coming back, that has existed over a hundred years, you know, you're set for life. You, 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 you will have learned a skill for life. Then obviously it's, you know, it's all, you know, much more than just learning a setup, but there's many more moving parts, but, you know, at least you're on the right path. Yeah, it's, yeah, COM. I, I had it on my watch list even. I passed on it. Too thin. Or, or not too thin, but the thing is I pay uh, per share commissions and I would have paid a lot of commissions and I just, you know. But it was also, I couldn't have bought that big of a position. So another one. This one also almost tripled from the high tide flat breakout. January was the month of high tide flag breakouts and February. Never seen so many high tide flags, liquid small and micro cap names, or you know, mostly small cap names. <sighs> do I use anything? Yeah, I do sometimes look at these market indicators. T2104, I think, is another one. This one uh, still looks great. Uh, you know, uh, there's more. Wait, which are the other ones? I don't even remember. I, I don't really look at market indicators. The, the problem is, and sentiment indicators, sometimes they work really well, but sometimes they're really off, especially sentiment indicators. Like, sentiment indicators have been constantly flashing warning signs over the past 12 months, and the past 12 months have been the best 12 month period since uh, 99 2000 and the same thing happened in, in 99 2000 there's a guy I follow on Twitter he traded that market and you know the, all these sentiment indicators were constantly flashing warning signs and that was the best market ever to trade so I think you can you know throw out these indicators 
what you really need to, the, the, the indicators just, you know, they're all lagging, okay? Focus on the leading indicator. Look, at, focus on what the stocks are doing. How are the stocks acting? What's working at the moment? Are there any setups? Are the setups following through? That's what's important. Focus on the important stuff. Everything else is just noise. It's, it's randomness. It's, gonna, it's just going to confuse you. The fewer things you look at, the fewer indicators, the better. UVXY, I'm just stalking it for now. I want to see how the volume is. I'm not interested in trading it now, but maybe mid-late day, especially late day if it looks like the markets are, you know, if they can't bounce and start taking out loser the day. Like we could have a, have a real washout potentially. Um, in that case, I would like to be long UVXY. And GME does what it's doing best. It's uh, going down, so I'm taking that one off. Roku looks like it's undercut the 50 day and it's bouncing. Very good. I only saw uh, Keith Gill, uh, his, uh, his speech, pretty funny, I'm not a cat, that was epic. But I think a lot of people don't understand the reference. <sighs> Okay. Is this a crash or a correction? That's the million dollar question. That's true, every crash starts out as a correction. But are we going to get a second crash inside of a year? Don't know. We'll see. Uh, so right now looks like things are bouncing. Da -da -da. Yeah, I'm probably not going to do anything for the next few hours. If I start seeing some of these uh, things stall, like I would love to add more to my food too. Oh, this is very strong. Oh, it's really strong already. Okay. Yeah, I, I may add to some things that, you know, you know, if they have tight ranges intraday, like something like ARKK, it bounces and then starts building lower highs and takes out the range to the downside, maybe I'll do, oh, it's already down a lot. Uh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, it's too early, I don't know what, what I'll do, it's too early, it depends. But right now, I'm going to play hard survival and that's what I'm gonna do because that's where I see the most value for the rest of my day um, this is my edge playing hearts of iron 4 when everyone else is shunning their accounts that's an edge
yeah. This is not a time to buy breakouts. This is a time to... I mean, look, if you have a solid day trading setup, or set up, sure, trade them. Uh, but if you are a swing trader, this is not the time to, you know, be aggressive either way. This is not a time to be aggressively long or short. Peter, is it the highs? Really? Oh, I mean the highs of day. I thought it was all-time highs. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks for joining and see you tomorrow. Don't do anything stupid. This is the market. It's going to shop you up faster than... Uh... Hmm. I'm trying to find a good analogy, but I, I can't really think of one. <laughs> 